from DailyDoseOfWeirdNews.com. I'm Darren Marlar, and this is your Daily Dose of Weird News. This episode is brought to you by the audiobook The Black-Eyed Kids by G. Michael Vasey, narrated by Darren Marlar. Hear a free sample on the audiobooks page at DailyDoseOfWeirdNews.com. Green Bay, Wisconsin has been named the drunkest city in America. Green Bay's number one ranking shows a two-spot jump from last year's drunk city list, surpassing former number one Appleton, Wisconsin, which fell to third place. In fact, the top four drunkest cities in America are all in Wisconsin, the others being Eau Claire at number two and Madison at number four. Man, Wisconsin really needs to find a hobby! British researchers have isolated what they call a hunger hormone that can make people so hungry they'll eat one-third more food than usual. Scientists have dubbed people who have the hormone Americans. Analysts say that if we keep making computers that think the way that we currently do, there will be a robot uprising. Although they do say you're relatively safe so long as your name isn't Sarah or John Connor. While we're on the subject, a poll has come out gauging public interest in likely future technological advancements. We are generally against the idea of altering the DNA of kids in the womb. We don't seem all that concerned about self-driving cars. But we're obviously worried about potential sci-fi movie scenarios, because 65% of us are against using robots to care for the sick and elderly, and 63% are against the use of drones in any way. Sadly, they did not ask the question about whether or not we're okay with hunter-killer Terminators, but I'm guessing we'd probably be against it. Cosmopolitan reports that 20% of women say technology makes it harder to communicate face-to-face. -face. Ironically, we learned this information via Facebook. Over the weekend, Anchorage police were asking the public to please stop calling 911 about a moose that gave birth to two calves near a Glen Highway overpass outside of Anchorage. Since the birth, police dispatchers have received more than 100 calls seeing the moose and calves in the area. Now the police department's asking people to stop tying up their emergency phone line for a non-emergency reason. Officials have also asked people to refrain from slamming on their brakes to stop and snap photos. This follows the flood of calls that happened last week with people reporting a flying squirrel wearing goggles. A recent study by the National Center on Addiction and Substance Abuse at Columbia University confirmed the positive impact of teens sharing meals with their families. The study tracked teenagers who ate dinner with their family two or fewer nights per week compared to those who had dinner with their family at least five times a week. Those teens in the former group were one and a half times as likely to drink alcohol two and a half times as likely to smoke cigarettes, and nearly three times as likely to try marijuana. Teens eating dinner at the table with their families were also five times more likely to know how to have a conversation without using a cell phone or using words like LOL. TV viewers in parts of New Jersey saw a warning flash across their screens one evening during primetime last week. The New Jersey Office of Emergency Management says a nuclear power plant warning was created as part of a training exercise. They add the message was intended for a small group of emergency management personnel who are participating in the exercise, and as a result of a coding error, the message was publicly broadcast. Hey, you know, with the current news today about North Korea and ISIS and all the hatred towards Trump, any message including the words nuclear and warning it's going to get your attention. In Taiwan, people are taking their pets to fortune tellers to find out what's in store for their furry friends. Dogs, cats, and even rabbits are being taken to their fortune tellers, with some people bringing pictures of their dead dogs to find out if their pet is having a good life in the afterlife. Heck, I can do that. Yeah, your pet's happy, it's in pet heaven. Now send me five bucks. In this case, F is for felony. The University of Central Florida student is facing a felony charge after allegedly hacking into the school system to change an F grade to a B. University police say an engineering professor became suspicious when he received an email from the school's electronic gradebook thanking him for approving an email from his grade roster several hours after approving his grades and getting the same email. The professor reviewed the grades and caught 22-year-old Sammy Adele Lamar's change. 
Amar eventually turned himself in and faces a felony charge of accessing a computer without authority. Okay, kids, you know, just because you saw it in the movie War Games, it doesn't mean it's legal. A new trend has some high school students getting their prom dates croissants – yeah, the French pastry – to wear on their wrist instead of the traditional floral corsage. The first photo evidence of this hilarious movement dates back on social media to 2015. Julia Gorman got a croissant corsage last year for her senior prom. I really don't like corsages, and I was talking to a friend about how I didn't want one, she told Today Style. He suggested that instead I opt for a croissant. So now you can tell your date she looks delicious and mean it. Four employees at an Ann Arbor, Michigan restaurant have been arrested at work by Immigrations and Customs Enforcement. The four were detained by officers who first ate breakfast at Sava's restaurant, then made the arrests. You're under arrest, but first, uh, could you warm up this coffee for me, please? NOAA is predicting an active hurricane season this year, with anywhere from five to nine showing up this year. They expect Hurricane Hillary to blow a lot of air, but not do anything significant. Egypt has moved King Tut's bed and chariot to a new museum in Cairo. Uh, no word on whether he brought his jammies. Have you signed up for the Marler Sheet? It's free, and everyone who subscribes is automatically entered into monthly drawings for prizes. For May 2017, I'm giving away a Daily Dose of Weird News t-shirt and mug combo. You can sign up for the Marler Sheet free at DailyDoseOfWeirdNews.com. A free navigation app from Carta GPS now features the option of getting your directions from celebrity voices, including former President Bill Clinton. Uh, turn right up ahead, there's a great no-tell motel you should check out. Ariana Grande announced that she's going to return to Manchester to perform a benefit concert for all the bombing victims. While she's there, she plans to lick all the croissants and say she hates the British. The Trump Soho Hotel in New York City is planning to make staff layoffs. Okay, everybody now sing! Soho, Soho, it's out of work you go! I, I can't whistle. In Utah, 39-year-old Tori Lee Castillo is facing child abuse charges in what witnesses are describing as an appalling incident. She allegedly locked her two children, ages two and five, in the trunk of her car while she left to go shopping at a local Walmart. The Riverdale City Police Department got a call after a witness reported seeing Castillo put her kids in the trunk. Utah police said the small children began making noise and moving frantically, causing the vehicle to shake. Fortunately, several Good Samaritans saw it happen and ran to the aid of the kids. Police say those Good Samaritans coached the five-year-old on how to open the trunk using an emergency latch. One witness said, I was shocked, I was shaken, and I was mad. Castillo was arrested as soon as she returned to her car. Personally, I don't think justice was served unless the police stuck her in the trunk of the patrol car to take her to jail. Police in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada are trying to find the thieves who made off with two semi-trailers full of more than $160,000 worth of beer. The trucks have been recovered, but the beer is still missing. I say get the bloodhounds sniffing for a suburban brewery. You might close this case. A Florida woman was arrested for assaulting her ex with an order of pork-fried rice. Man, others throw rice at you when you get married, and now your ex throws rice at you after you're married? Is marriage secretly sponsored by Uncle Ben's? A couple of neighbors in Manchester who can't get along felt it was important to waste the time of local police. But this was no ordinary neighbor's dispute. No, the scenario was shared by officers who tweeted, Today we've dealt with a neighbor dispute where a dead goldfish covered in cheese has been posted through a letterbox. I kid you not. <laughs> Wow, just when you thought there were no original crimes left to commit. Ice cream giant Ben & Jerry's has come up with an interesting protest supporting gay rights and marriage equality in Australia. Saying, love comes in all flavors, the company's 26 stores in Australia have banned serving of two scoops of the same kind of ice cream until same-sex marriage is legalized in the country. In a statement, Ben & Jerry's asks customers to imagine how furious being denied a double scoop of their favorite flavor would make them. 
But this doesn't even begin to compare to how furious you would be if you were told you were not allowed to marry the person you love," it said. All right, hey guys, um, you do realize that people can just go to another ice cream store to get the two scoops of their favorite ice cream, right? Instead of ending a ban on same-sex marriage, all you're doing is creating a ban on Ben & Jerry's. Disney says that threat of cyber thieves stealing a copy of the latest Pirates of the Caribbean movie and holding it for ransom was apparently a hoax. Although, after reading some of the movie reviews, they might have been better off if it had been stolen and never released. Two South Carolina men were charged with harassing an alligator after forcing the creature to drink beer. The men were on a dirt road near Hardyville when they saw the young alligator crossing the road. The duo picked it up and poured beer down its throat before releasing it. It later swam away in a nearby pond. The two men uploaded photos of their antics to social media, which is how officers from the South Carolina Department of Natural Resources got wind of their crime. You know what, hey, maybe we should bring back those Obama smartphones for everybody so all criminals have an equal opportunity to incriminate themselves. Brace yourselves for this story. Adam Sandler's latest movie, The Meyerowitz Stories, is actually getting some Oscar buzz. Never thought you'd see Adam Sandler in the word Oscar in the same sentence, did ya? In Massachusetts, Orlando Melendez got some bad news. A judge has denied his request to juggle during his trial to show jurors he was just clowning around when he allegedly tried to rob a convenience store. That's right, juggle. Melendez has pleaded not guilty to charges that he used a toy gun to try to rob a convenience store in December. The 20-year-old man who is representing himself asked that he be allowed to juggle three wads of paper for 20 seconds to show jurors that the alleged attempted robbery was a misunderstanding because he's a professional clown. Okay, now honestly, you know, with the news of the past couple of years, telling people you are a clown, that is in no way going to help your case with the jury. Now that the FBI investigation has begun to focus on Jared Kushner, he has been told to lay low. White House lawyers have hidden him in a secure, undisclosed location right next to Kellyanne Conway. The Memorial Day weekend box office was the lowest it's been in 18 years. In fact, the only way that it could have been worse is if all the opening films starred Pauly Shore trying to make a comeback. Despite being fired from CNN, Kathy Griffin has apologized for being photographed while holding a mock decapitated head of Donald Trump. She took to Twitter to apologize for the Trump beheading photos, writing, I sincerely apologize, I'm just now seeing the reaction of these images. I crossed the line, I moved the line, then I cross it, I went way too far. The image is too disturbing, I understand how it offends people, it wasn't funny, I get it, I've made a lot of mistakes in my career, I will continue, I ask for your forgiveness. Uh, nah, nah, you know what, she got her name out there, she dominated the news cycle, so I'm gonna guess she's not all that sorry. After being kicked off of a Southwest Airlines flight this week, a passenger acting erratically tried to get back on board by running onto the aircraft. The Chicago-bound flight was scheduled to depart from Las Vegas when the man locked himself in the restroom and refused to come out. Eventually, he was tossed, but another passenger says the next thing you know, he tried to fight his way back on, and that's when the Southwest guys came and got him. And when that didn't work, they called over the United Airlines guys because they know how to get the job done. Estimates are that during summer, 818 hot dogs are eaten every second. But enough about Rosie O'Donnell. A couple in Alberta, Canada had just gotten engaged aboard a hot air balloon before it suddenly crashed. Everybody is okay, but you know, sometimes it'd be kind of nice if the angels gave their hints in a more subtle manner. Tony Schwartz, the ghostwriter of President Trump's most famous book, The Art of the Deal, says Trump is likely to resign rather than let any of his spiraling scandals make it seem like he might lose. Schwartz believes Trump will soon start trying to figure out a way to resign instead of potentially facing impeachment proceedings or enduring continuing humiliation. He wants to figure out a way, as he's done all his career, to turn a loss into a victory, and so he will declare victory when he leaves," says Schwartz. So, if a month from now Trump suddenly declares, I've done it, I've made America great again, so my job is done, well, now you'll know why. Former Ford CEO Mark Fields will be given a $54.4 million severance package. 
Yeah, that'll show him. A Texas theater is getting flack for having a women-only showing of Wonder Woman. Uh, by the way, it's sold out. Well, hey, all right, isn't gender a social construct nowadays? I mean, that's what they're telling us. So, well, couldn't guys just show up and say, today I identify as female, you know, and then just get in anyway? In January of this year, Emily Ruddow of Toronto had just finished running a 10K or 6.1 miles every day for 31 consecutive days. Turns out she was just getting started. Emily is now undertaking a much bigger quest to set a Guinness World Record by running a half marathon for more consecutive days than anyone else. And to do that, she will have to run a half marathon every day for 70 days in a row. Man, I am exhausted just saying all that. <sighs> Give me a second to catch my breath. <sighs> Prince Charles has received an honorary degree from a school in Transylvania. You can insert your own vampire joke here. Americans made 433 million fewer trips to restaurants at lunchtime last year, resulting in roughly $3.2 billion in lost business for restaurants. Well, yeah, that's because we had less money to spend. Thanks, Obama! Members of a bizarre religious sect in North Carolina may be going to trial for allegedly trying to beat homosexual demons out of a now former member. Matthew Fenner says that he joined Word of Faith Fellowship in Spindale, North Carolina with his mother and brother in 2010, but he fled on January 27, 2013 after he was attacked by two dozen members for two hours as he was leaving a prayer service. The Associated Press has interviewed 43 former members of the 750-member Evangelical Church as well as reviewed documents and covertly made recordings and reports that sinners are routinely purified quote unquote, by being punched, choked, and thrown to the floor as a means of expelling demons. Really? Okay, can, can you show me in the Bible where expelling demons works like that? I've been a born-again Christian now since 1989. I not once have come across that passage. It is cults like this that give true Christianity a bad name. Tiger Woods was arrested for DUI over Memorial Day weekend. Gee, you know, you'd think if anybody would know best when it's time to use a driver, it'd be Tiger. The female zookeeper was killed by a tiger at a zoo in Cambridge, England on Monday. That had nothing to do with uh, Tiger Woods driving, though. A baby in Brazil has been compared to Stewie from Family Guy after she appeared to start walking minutes after she was born. Doctors were trying to bathe her, but she had other ideas. She started to wriggle around to walk on her own. Now, normally babies don't start walking until they're about 12 months old, and one of the nurses said, oh my gosh, the girl is walking, good gracious! A midwife said, merciful father, I was trying to wash her here, and she keeps getting up to walk. She has walked from here to here. <laughs> Even babies know it's a bad idea to stay in the hospital once the insurance runs out. Australia is considering a ban on anyone coming to their country who is a convicted pedophile. Considering? What, like there's somebody who would disapprove of that plan? Join the Weirded Forward movement where Marlar House weirdos make a difference in the world, a couple bucks at a time. Our latest Weird It Forward campaign is for Keith. He has Down syndrome and was unexpectedly accepted to college, but sadly he has no money for tuition, so we are trying to remedy that. Get the details by watching the video at WeirdItForward.com. NASA is starting to give details about their new mission, Solar Probe Plus, in which they're going to send a craft that will fly into the sun. Has our economy rebounded so well that we're okay now to just launch money directly into the sun? Yeah, well, d don't worry about it, though. I mean, it's not going to burn up because I hear they're going to send the probe at night. Senator and longtime SNL writer slash cast member Al Franken credits John Belushi's death from a drug overdose with his getting off drugs. Yeah, I beat drugs because I'm good enough, I'm smart enough, and doggone it, people like me. In the aftermath of her disturbing photo shoot with a mocked-up, decapitated Trump head, Kathy Griffin has lost her job at CNN. Oh yeah, that'll show her! Seven months from now! 
Meanwhile, Kathy Griffin has also lost her celebrity endorsement for Squatty Potty. It's a bathroom products company that has a pooping unicorn for a mascot. And no, I'm not kidding about that. Man, you know you've screwed up when even the folks at a company that specialize in pooping are offended by your actions. Scott Pelley has been shown the door and he is out at the CBS Evening News. Hey, you know, I hear Kathy Griffin might be available now to fill that slot. President Trump has picked up around 3 million Twitter followers in recent days, most of which appear to be Twitter bots. Screenwriter John Niven points out that Trump's account saw a big spike in followers over the weekend, with most of them newly created accounts without photos or tweets, which are telltale signs of Twitter bots. Well, sounds like screenwriter John Niven is an unemployed screenwriter with way too much time on his hands. Schools are increasingly taking charge of lunchtime, encouraging parents to pack healthy choices in their kids' lunchboxes. But a mom in Australia was shocked when she was called out for sending her child to school not with a candy bar or with a can of soda, no, but a pack of raisins. According to a note sent home with the child, the reason the raisins were shunned by the school was because of their high sugar content. <laughs> really? <laughs> we're not talking rum raisin ice cream here, it was just a box of plain old raisins. Man, the only thing more dried up than raisins nowadays is the critical thinking in schools. United Airlines is facing a fine for flying a plane 23 times when it was not classified as airworthy. Eh, well, that, that might explain why my flight was delayed while they looked for a pair of jumper cables. It seems around eight Yale University graduate students claiming union status demonstrated in front of the Yale president's home recently to demand better benefits. And by better benefits, they of course meant benefits beyond the annual free tuition, $30,000 stipends, and free health care that they already get. Yeah! Some of the students characterized their actions as an indefinite fast. Others called it a hunger strike. However, check this out, a pamphlet associated with the unionizing made it clear that strikers could leave and go eat any time they got hungry. <laughs> so, so there are hunger strikes and then there are hunger strikes at Yale. Private data has been stolen from Chipotle in a computer breach. Some people will do anything for that secret E. coli recipe. Well, it seems President Trump has been handing out his cell phone number to world leaders and urging them to call him directly, an unusual invitation that breaks diplomatic protocol and is raising concerns about the security and secrecy of the Commander-in-Chief's communications. Reportedly, Trump has urged leaders of Canada and Mexico to reach him on his cell phone. Aha! Uh -huh, that's it! Seven digits for a phone number. His phone number must be Cavefe. The Oklahoma state budget has caused schools to cut back to only four days a week. Children all across America are now begging their parents to move to Oklahoma. Recent research reveals you can make yourself feel good simply by talking about yourself. Those who share information about themselves stimulate areas of the brain linked to value and motivation, according to a Harvard study. Researcher Diana Tammy says that is why some folks constantly talk about themselves, noting it feels good. Man, Barack Obama must always be in a good mood. A man was arrested at the Trump International Hotel in Washington, D.C. with an assault rifle, a handgun, and 90 rounds of ammunition in his possession. Well, I, I guess that's one way to ensure you get some alone time at the hotel pool. Payless Shoes could close another 400 stores. Yes, there will be less Payless. The Marlar House mobile app's now available, and it's free. You can find me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Watch Marlar House YouTube videos, check out the t-shirts, mugs, audiobooks, and other stuff in the Marlar House store, see what's in my blog, and more. It's all in one app, and it's free for iOS and Android users. You can download it now at MarlarHouse.com mobile. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe if you want to see more. 
and click that little bell icon next to the subscribe button to be notified when I post new videos. And if you're already an official weirdo, please share this video on your own social media. Find even more weird news that I didn't have time for on the Facebook page at DailyDoseOfWeirdNews.com. I'm Darren Marlar, and I'll see you next time, weirdos!